Quantic Media. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to MLG.TV. I'm going to be casting another replay from MLG Anaheim 2011. My name is Axel, and this is going to be a loser's bracket round two from the championship bracket matchup. It's going to be a best of three in between spawning in at the lower left position, the red Protoss player EG in control. His opponent in the top right, the blue Protoss player FXO Choya. And before we get in too far into this game, let me go ahead and explain how both of these players actually got here. Choya had a heroic run through the open bracket before losing to Liquid Tyler in the final round. Uh, basically, the the series that determines who goes into pool play, Choya lost that best of three to Liquid Tyler, so now finds himself in loser's bracket round two after beating Millennium's Todd in loser's bracket round one of the championship bracket. In control, on the other hand, started out in pool play, didn't have a very good Saturday or Friday. He went 0-5 in pool play and immediately dropped straight down to loser's bracket round two. So this is his first game on Sunday. He is 0-5, hoping to get a victory so we can at least have something positive to say coming out of MLG Anaheim 2011. So this will be a PvP on the map of Taldrim Altar, and whenever you hear those two phrases, PvP and Taldrim Altar, in the same sentence, you got to talk about the foregate. And you're probably wondering why. Well, on most maps, there's a, there's a ramp, and it's small. One force field can block the ramp. There's no ramp here. It's on even ground. There's no high ground advantage, and you need two force fields to block that off at least. Maybe three. I'm not entirely sure, but... That means a lot of Protoss players, like, you're basically forced to do a foregate or you will lose the game. I mean, if you're going to do anything but foregate, like, you better get that Robo down as fast as possible and get those Immortals out ASAP if you hope to stand a chance against an oppos opposing player who's actually foregating you. So we'll have to see what both of these players end up doing. They're both scouting around the map, scouting that top left position, but I think they saw each other. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm pretty sure they saw each other, so we're going to be scouting each other next. And what we're going to look out for are two things mainly. Actually, three things. Chrono Boost on the Nexus. If they save up a lot of Chrono Boost, that means they're saving it for that Warp Gate technology to get that out as fast as possible. The other thing we're looking for is that second gas. If they put that second gas down, it usually implies they're not going to be foregating him because they're going to use the gas towards a more sentry-heavy composition or to tech up into either A, Immortals, or B, some sort of Templar play really fast or some sort of Stargate play. Um, and the other thing we're looking for is the third pylon. If the third pylon goes in their base, it usually means they're going to be playing somewhat defensively. Now, if the third pylon goes down, say, over here in outside their opponent's third, then they're definitely going to try to be aggressive with their foregate. So it definitely remains to be seen. I mean, one of the more awesome PvPs I've seen on this map was Huck versus MC. It was foregate versus foregate at, oh, what, what, what tournament was that? Um, Home Story Cup. Yes, Home Story Cup. And... Both players essentially mined out of their mains, and they both had four gates the entire game, never really teched up to anything else. And look at this, Troya actually getting a second gas here. That's a little bit peculiar. That definitely implies that he's not four gating. Also, the third pylon going down in his base as well, so definitely remains to be seen what he's actually going to do. In control, on the other hand, has a probe over here looking to do some scary stuff. And there we go, four gates going down. Keep in mind, no third pylon just yet has already stopped at 20 probes, while Troya is continuing to build those probes. So in control, definitely going to go for an offensive forget here. The story here, though, is will Choya actually find this probe? And he's actually moving in that direction. So in control has to be very careful. Your stalker coming forward. And will he see the probe? Yes, he sees the probe. So in control's probe is in trouble. That's actually very bad indeed. Might try to throw down a pylon. Yes, he does. Throws down two pylons, and that may be excellent for him. Back in Choya's base is putting down four, three additional gateways now that he knows his opponent is going for that forgate play. And Troya is in a little bit of trouble here. In control coming forward with two stalkers and a zealot. Keep in mind, once these pylons finish, he can warp in units. How far along is his warp gate technology? It is almost done, so he will be able to warp those gateways into warp gates. Troya trying as fast as he can to take down these pylons, but reinforcements coming in from in control in the form of two stalkers targeting down the zealot. But the pylon might go down, trying to warp in some units here. No, the pylon goes down from in control, so this offensive four gate is failing for now. In control backing up, going to try to target down some stalkers here and actually doing a decent amount of damage. Two stalkers and a zealot better than two stalkers, but an additional zealot. Additional Stalker, I should say, coming forward from Troya. Going to be sniping away another Stalker from In Control. Another probe coming forward. Will he be able to get a pylon down? Trying to run by. Oh, and In Control could get inside the base here. And the probe will get in, but not putting down any pylons. And that was really interesting. Troya put down something, but they canceled it. Might have been the Twilight Council rebuilding it back here at the top. Keep in mind, Troya has the income lead 23 to 19. In control, he used to have 20 probes. Remember, he lost two probes when he was trying to throw down this two forward pylons. 
And now Troya putting down that Twilight Council has been mining gas. On the other side of things, in control, is putting down a Twilight Council of his own. But Troya does have that Harvester lead. Units tab shows six Stalkers in favor of Troya to the five Stalkers make that six and a Zealot from in control. So pretty even in that regard, but Troya has that Econ advantage. It depends. What is he going to do from here? So Blink on the way for Troya and in control, probably going to go for Blink as well. He's about to get to 150, 150 for that Blink research. That's exactly what he's going to do. So both of these players going to go for that Blink play. The thing is, though, oops, sorry about that. The thing is, though. Troya is getting Blink way before his opponent. Not way before. A decent amount of time. He's at, how do you see, 54 out of 110. His opponent is at 34. So Troya is about 20 ahead. 20, 20 StarCraft, 2 seconds ahead of his opponent. Troya coming forward at the same time. Is ahead 50 to 43 supply. And Troya is going to have a nice time here where he's going to have Blink and his opponent isn't. And look at that. Troya has so many Stalkers on the field. 12 to the 8 of his opponent. Of course, In Control has been trying to rebuild those probes. Troya has since ceased pro production in control come down the ramp but Troya coming forward and in control might be trapped here Troya could blink forward whenever he wants probably gonna blink back the weakened stalkers that's exactly what he's gonna do and in control cannot be feeling good and there we go Troya blinking forward sniping down the stalkers and zealots of in control and Troya looking like he's in really good position to take game one and take a lead in this series Troya backing away blinking back I should say his weakened stalkers and in control just doesn't have the unit composition to deal with this Aggression from Troya and in control throws down the GG. So Troya, FXO Troya goes up 1 0. And in control is on the verge of being eliminated from MLG Anaheim 2011. Game two is coming up. Don't go anywhere. I guess I shouldn't say don't go anywhere because this isn't live. So I'll say try to find game two where there should be a link somewhere at the bottom. But either way, stay tuned to MLG.tv for more casts from MLG Anaheim. My name's Axel. See you guys in game two.